Hey guys, what's up? It's Jules here for WhatCulture.com with another episode of the most insane things happening in wrestling this week. The show that does exactly what it says on the tin in the most annoying way possible. You're welcome. So before we kick things off, I've just got two things to note about. The first is, is that I'm actually going on holiday soon. So, you know, yes, even bad guys deserve a break as well. So I've actually shot this in advance. So apologies if there's some massive news that breaks and I'm not around to cover it. I mean, who knows? It could be anything like Shane McMahon might even land a punch every once in a while. I know it's insane, but then again, it would make it on the show if it was. Anyway, the second one is, as you could tell, I'm wearing a prototype version of the Having a Giraffe t-shirt. Let me know your feedback in the comments section below. Is it disgusting orange enough for you? Could it be more orange? Possibly. Let us know what you think of the design, the font, I'm just touching myself now. And let me know if you'd still want to buy it, because at the end of the day, if I can get this off the ground with the bosses, you too might be lucky enough to wear this disgusting shirt and pay for the privilege. It's a strange relationship that we have. Anyway, let's get on with the show and hit that intro. So we begin this week's episode by asking a question that I never thought I'd actually ask. Is Kurt Angle fucking mental? It seems to be, based on his decisions on this week's Raw, I mean, I don't know why they're making his character seem so stupid, but it's actually also insulting our intelligence as well. I'll explain. So basically, he moved the bar over to SmackDown. He clearly signed that at some point and said, yeah, that's fine. Do you not remember that they are the number one contenders for the Raw Tag Team titles that's happening later on? Isn't that match now completely just like we know what's going to happen? So the deleters of worlds are going to get the belts. So there's no point in the bar being there. So there's no point in the storyline building up to it. And all we're getting from the bar is they lost to a 10 year old, admittedly he did have Braun Strowman, then they lost to Bree Zango, and now they're on SmackDown. Way to make their exit feel much more like a dismissal than anything else. But I know what you're thinking, you're saying to yourself, Jules, they did this because of the fact that the Raw Superstar roster is just too swollen. Is that why we've got the Ascension on Raw now, is it? What a trade, the bar for the Ascension, fantastic. And it's not even the only case of it happening in the same night. Samoa Joe went over to SmackDown as well. And he's challenging for the Intercontinental Championship at the same pay-per-view that the bar are challenging for the Raw Tag Team Championships. So he ain't gonna win the belt, is he? So Samoa's of Joseph is going to lose and it cuts out all of the storytelling thing from underneath it. Am I happy about this? No. And before you say, oh, they could move the Intercontinental Championship across. Well, why did they have Jeff Hardy come over? He's got the US title, you can't have both on the same brand. Either way, mental. It's like the WWE thinks that we can't put two and two together. It's five, by the way, and is trying desperately to make this happen. You got works. <laughs> it ain't gonna happen, not on my watch. So it turns out that this week, John Cena and Nikki Bella have split apart. Not literally like as in with an ax, I mean like as a couple they have broken up, which is obviously very sad. The internet obviously met this with equal parts help and support and love and absolute vitriol and hate, as is their wont to do. But you know what? I'm not gonna even bother entertaining any of the gossips or who's to blame or whatever. It's just another case of a relationship breaking down on the long road of wrestling. However, I did receive some special footage from the WWE that made me question something. Because I wasn't looking at who was to blame, but I was looking at the date in which it happened. Seems to be tying into something else that Nikki Bella is quite a big part of. Oh, John, there you are. It is me, Nikki Bella. I'm so glad I found you. I've got something to tell you. I'm leaving you. No, John, don't cry your big beefy tears. You'll find someone else. Chin up, dog. All right, you can take him now. Yeah, we're done. Yeah, get him out of here. Oh, what a terrible, terrible thing to have happened to me, Nikki Bella. I'm so upset by this. If only there were a TV show that people could tune into next month and see how I'm going to deal with this emotional breakup. I'm sure that that will spike ratings. Yeah, I told you, pretty raw stuff. Austin Aries is a damn good wrestler, and anyone who caught him during his 205 Live commentary stint knows that he is great on the mic as well. 
for the most part, that is, because this week he got a bit annoyed at the jab that the WWE made at TNA, where he is now a part of the Impact Wrestling. If you don't know what I'm talking about, Kurt Angle just said to Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens when they came looking for a job, that he heard that TNA was hiring. It was a pretty funny joke, to be fair, but apparently it riled up Austin Aries in all the wrong ways, because at a recent media conference, he said that the joke was outdated, as if it would be so much more funnier if he'd said Impact instead of TNA. But he should have stopped there. He didn't, though. He carried on by saying this. He said, it's cool, man. We are hiring. If you come here, we won't test you or take money out of your pocket for smoking marijuana. Okay, not sure if you want to advertise the fact that your company that you work for doesn't have a wellness policy. In fact, there's a, there's a, it's a good thing to have a wellness policy. You probably shouldn't be advertising to juice heads to come into the company who might end up killing themselves through an overdose. That's, that's probably not a smart move. So we end with a scenario in which, by responding to a crack made by the WWE, Austin Aries ends up looking like he actually smokes it. Right, now remember at the end of Nia Jax's big match at WrestleMania that it was kind of a culmination of a storyline against body shaming, that she overcame some mean and critical comments made about her weight and proved that it wasn't her size, but it was her talent that counts. That was really nice and heartwarming, and it looked for a second like the WWE were about to turn a corner and enter into a new age of positivity and non-body shaming. And then Roman Reigns called Samoas of Joseph fat and lazy. The promo battle between Reigns and Samoas of Joseph was heavily one-sided because basically the spa towel loving Samoan is much better on the mic. So Reigns dug deep and pulled out the only trick he really knows how to do, a load of playground insults that he's borrowed from Vince McMahon. Why don't you come on down here and see what your lazy fat ass can do? Right, well, Roman, the thing is, is that Joe is a badass, not a fat ass, and by casting him in this negative light, the WWE is actually doing the thing it doesn't want to do. It is driving people away from Roman Reigns. It makes Roman look like a f***ing moronic high school jock with this type of behaviour. And it shows, well, without shadow of a doubt, I mean, I don't know what I was expecting, that the Nia Jax level of positivity that her storyline brought in has been buried, along with Vince's boner for Vince, in the big dog's backyard. Looks like the cat's out of the basket. Because the match will once again feature a casket. Naming Jericho might have been a faker. Because it's now the greatest Rusev against The Undertaker. It's Rusev Day! Yes, that's right, it's back on. One of the most confusing storylines of late is actually going to go ahead and Rusev will face The Undertaker in a casket match at the Greatest Royal Rumble pay-per-view. It's a really odd scenario to be in because the WWE clearly know what Rusev is. He's a fantastic worker. He is incredibly over with the crowd. I mean, listen to the responses he gets for Rusev Day. And he must be punished, seems to be what they think as a result. It's like they hate the fact that he is naturally getting over. They hate the fact that the fans have once again chosen somebody to push and they are resisting against it. He's booked as a heel, yet has come across like a babyface. He is getting a babyface pop, which they should just lean into. Let him be a babyface and they've got one white hot commodity. He's already shifting merch by the ton. Just a lean into the curve. But it was so confusing how all of these events came to be because he was and then Jericho stepped in and then he wasn't and then it was a triple threat match for a bit. And now on Twitter it seems to be that the only reason that he is in the match is because Lana of all people said that she's allowing him to wrestle. It is so confusing and you know what? I'm gonna bust it out. You thought that I didn't, didn't come prepared. You knew it was coming out at some point. You know, I'm putting this on, I'm putting this on. I'm not doing the whole outfit because, oh God, it's pulled my hat down. That's a bit embarrassing that is. But you know what? Creative storytelling, creative storytelling people at the WWE. Are you having a laugh? Are you having, oh <laughs> WWE creative team trying to book this fucking angle. Are you having a giraffe? Having an absolute giraffe with this, aren't you? Why are you doing this to old Rusev, eh? By the way, I'm probably not going to wear the full costume every single time, only for the pay-per-views. But the hat, the hat stays. Hats, hats, hats.
hats. And there we have it, the most insane things happening in wrestling this week. Now to close out the show the only way I know how by reading out my favourite comment from last week's episode. And this comes from madfake9939, who says, When my mum came into my room while I was watching this video, I switched to porn. I mean, it's way easier to explain porn than a guy in a giraffe costume who is talking about wrestling. I see that. That moves me to my core, because that's all I've ever wanted to do, is be a show that you are so ashamed to tell people about, but low-key quote, having a giraffe on the sly. That is my goal in life. Let's make that happen. Proud of you, son. Right, all that's left for me to do is thank Michael Sidgwick and Adam Nicholas, because he is doing the editing duties this week, because Phil's on holiday. Hi, Adam, how are you? Hope you're well. And to thank you for your continued support and for watching. Without you, I would be a f***ing idiot not being paid to do this. Let me know what you think about that. Let me know what you think about the giraffe head that's on the floor. Let me know what you think about this, just in general. It'd be nice to get feedback, because I constantly want to try and improve this show for the benefit of everyone involved. As always, I've been Jules, you've been awesome. Keep those having a giraffe hashtags coming, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to subscribe below, and if you're looking for more content like this, then try a few things that are floating about around my ears. It might be fun. I can't promise it though, but it might be.